Okay, this is the latest from Shane Cashman. I am grateful that Eliza trusts me with her story. I am grateful for my readers. I am proud of my work. Well, that makes one of us. I am blessed with these opportunities. There has been no new information brought to light that would sway my belief in her, nor played a role in the removal of the series. <sighs> I'm so tired. What? Of this is like, he's so good at saying nothing. Yeah, well, I look, man. I just I'm, I'm over the blind defense of mentally ill people and in particularly mentally ill women. Like, mm -hmm. You don't have to condone unwell behavior. You can just you don't you just don't have to do that. But for some reason, these guys are like running full offense for Lizard Blue. And I just don't understand it. Lizard just, Blue? <laughs> because if she was a man, like let's say she was a man and she decided to be this, you know, child ex trafficking um, advocate. And then it started to, to come out like, oh, well, you know, maybe maybe he wasn't trafficked. This, these stories are sus. He'd be canceled tomorrow. But because it's a woman, clearly she needs to be defended. I don't understand these people anymore. That grooming story that you're going to talk about, like that, that's part of the problem. Right. I think we a lot of words don't mean anything anymore. Words like racist, um, bigot. Now, unfortunately, uh, ex -trafficking. trafficking. Yeah. Now it means nothing. What are some other ones? Problematic. Problematic. Uh, racist, <laughs> Nazi, yeah. anti-Semitic. I mean, it's like it doesn't really mean anything anymore. Um, okay, so here's quartering response with the old Jack Murphy beard, which has become the internet's dunce cap. Uh, help, I'm being trafficked by PR firms. Oh, no. <laughs> then you're simply ignoring some of, uh, this is Pash Matatos. She's had a lot of really great uh, contributions to this whole scandal here. Then you're simply ignoring some of Eliza's own words. That's fine. You're homies, but don't gaslight your audience into thinking they just didn't understand your writing. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they took down parts one, two, and three. At first, it was just part three, and then later on, parts one and two additionally. And the reason was that the readers, uh, what was it? What was the exact language that we couldn't understand it or something? Um, misperceived. Well, it was misperceived. Because we're so stupid. We don't understand writings. It reminds me of the, the Biden administration and the CDC when they gaslight the public. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same oh yeah let's see mm -hmm. where do i find where do i find where this article is um oh probably in the read section uh all right i'm gonna share this screen oops he's gone now okay Woo. okay they're like please let some new news come in so we can stop talking about this Okay, guys, how to survive a perpetual trauma machine. How to survive a psyop and a puff piece. Turns out the way to survive that is by deleting all your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Due to the fact that the gonzo journalism style of this series was misperceived by readers, the series in its entirety has been removed. We apologize for any inconvenience. Inconvenience? Oh, you mean like libel? <laughs> uh... Yes, part three was mostly pursued. taken down for mega, mega libel towards Defango. Huh. Well, I would never take something down and say it was because it was misperceived. I would just say, um, you know, there were some infactual statements. Like, how are you going to put it on the reader? Be like, you were wrong. Like, but what? If you, yeah, if you say that, then you have to admit to being wrong and not doing your job. So but that's okay. But like, what? Why can't people just do? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's why we've been picked. Um, you just. <laughs> You just say so. That's it. And life goes on. People would like, honestly, if Tim had, well, not him, I don't know, if him, his staff, whatever, if they just admitted they were wrong, nobody yeah. would have cared in a week. Literally, no one would have cared in a week. It would have been fine. But I guess it's too hard for people. <laughs> they're literally the last ones to admit that they're wrong. Ghost Crusaders knew Shane Cashman tweet. Oh, is that, uh, thank you, Ghost Crusaders. Yeah, yeah. Is that the one that we showed or is there an additional one? Nick V, does he know that uh, that his story was pulled from Tim Cass? Uh, yes, I'm sure he knows. Yes, yeah, so Defango I've had on quite a few times uh, in the last like week or two weeks. Oh, um, okay, sorry, clicked in my head. Because, <laughs> yes, he wrote uh, a thread that a lot of us have referred to uh, to give us sort of the bones of Eliza's timeline. Some people are like, oh, this is wrong, that is wrong. But I feel like overall... 
it was a good timeline, a good basic structure of the things that are sticking out about her backstory. Yep, that's great. Yeah. And yeah, what do you make of the the Shane articles coming down? I feel like we talked just a couple days ago and you were like, Oh, I gave them forty eight hours and then poof. They yeah, it was yesterday, I think, because you were on the uh the low cow stream. Yeah. And we were talking about, well, we'll see what happens, and then poof, they came down sooner than I think a lot of us thought. So Yeah. I reached out to Cassandra McDonald about it, basically. Like I sent a tweet out and then she contacted me. We talked a little bit about it because she knows who I am. Was it like, what the fuck? It was just like I tagged Tim, her, and uh, Shane, and I was like, one of y'all needs to talk to get a hold of me and talk to me about this ASAP. Wow. Because this is not a good look for you or me, and it's obviously false. And I was like, so wow. like, let's talk about this. Cassandra got a hold of me, and then we discussed some things real quick. She told Shane to give me a call in the morning. He did, in fact, call me in the morning like a couple of times even before I was awake. I don't get up early like at eight o'clock in the morning ever, but mm -hmm. uh, we talked. It, I thought we had a pretty decent conversation, but you know, lo or people that are journalists in that fashion sometimes, you know, like they just act like they're cool and then they'll like bag you later on. But he seemed to understand what I was telling him about the situation and how you know, like that company Shadow Box was not my company, it was the right. company that people were asking me to work for that I exposed. You know, I was the one that came out and exposed those people to self detriment to myself. And, you know, I've been suffering their abilities for the last couple of years online. So all this information that got fed to Tim is basically all on par with what was being said about me many years ago. Where do you think this information was coming from? Like, why do you think he was led astray with the nature of this, you know, Eliza Blue situation, which was really, which is really <laughs> a censorship story and it became. About something totally else. I heard Frank coughing uh, to the sound of BX Bullet. <laughs> yeah, I heard that uh, I, th too. I think she was somebody who was informing Shane, which is so funny considering, you know, a lot of us have known that she has been gunning uh, for Venti's downfall. Just hated her for what, months, years now? So maybe not Bullet, the, the yeah. most trustworthy source. Dave, BX Bullet took down her Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, it seems she disappeared from the internet as soon as. Uh, didn't that she get suspended dropped. from YouTube? She got suspended from YouTube, and then she deactivated her Twitter. But she was suspended from YouTube for a while, I thought. Yeah, at least yeah. A few YouTube, months. she's been for a while, but Twitter, she just recently disappeared. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know why she deactivated? Uh, because the article named her. Yeah, by name, well, or B as BX Bullet. I mean. To me, it seems like she was investigating the Schoenberger character that I had a run with, with and I exposed. For some reason, she believes that I was still working with the guy, even though I have a restraining order against the dude. So, you know, mm. whatever. Um, and I talked to Cassandra, and she basically told me that she was having some issues with something called E the Friend or the Errant Friend, which is an offshoot of the same group that Thomas Schoenberger was running. So we talked about her friend that was having some issues getting stalked by those people. And I'm like, hey, guess what? It's the same group, right? You know, these are the same people. So I explained Cassandra my story. She had Shane call me. I explained it to him. He seemed like he was all right with it. But after no action for a few like hours earlier, I just messaged Cassandra and I'm like, so, you know, you haven't told me anything. What's going on? At least, you know, can we get that one article down and then, you know, discuss it? And she made sure to take that third one down. And then this morning, she hit me up this morning and she was like, yeah, we're going to take the rest of it down because Shane doesn't seem to believe your story. And she's like, there's really nothing that, you know, like I can do, but I'm not going to let the whole thing be up there. So Cassandra took it all down. That okay, was her wow. choice. She, she wasn't the... She wasn't the editor on the story. The other guy that actually is Shane's editor was the one that allowed that to get put up or whatever. But Cassandra was like, no, we're just going to take that whole thing down. Maybe the tagline isn't the best, but, you know, for me, I think it's, you know, good enough for now. And if Shane wants to keep like talking shit on Twitter or whatever, you know, then then we might actually move forward with some type of lawsuit or something like that. But it's really just up to Shane at this point because, I mean, he could say whatever he wants. How did your conversation with him go? 
I thought it went all right. You know, like he seemed pretty cordial. Um, he did seem a little bit manic, I guess you could say. He definitely sounded like uh, he was not sleeping and he was like having a little bit of trouble. Like he, he definitely sounded uncomfortable talking to me. I'll say that. And uh, he seemed to get a little bit more comfortable as the conversation went forward. But, you know, I could tell when I was talking to him that he, he wasn't really, you know, believing what I was saying. And I was like, yeah. dude. You got this information probably from Rocco Castorio because I sent it all to him when he told me he was going to write a story about this and finally expose it all. And then Rocco Castorio turned around and just said, no, I'm just going to just post all this stuff and, you know, act like you're a bad guy anyway, because I don't like you. And I see it now that Rocco Castorio used to work for Tim Pool with another person named emily molly they had a thing called subverse where they raised like a million bucks and that kind of went belly up when ian crosslin was watching some girl's cat took it over to tim's house and kind of left it there emily and rocco accused him of stealing their cat even though that wasn't the thing there was a big like a big blow up apparently somebody took some money Tim sued both of them, and then just recently it was released that the lawsuit was actually dismissed. So, like, Tim can't even do anything about it anymore. So it's basically like he lost a bunch of stuff. And I think that whole beef started during January 6th when Emily Molly and Rocco Castorio were filming at the Capitol, and Tim Poole requested that they give him all of their footage and everything else, and they basically refused. So, like, there's the backstory there. A million dollars missing. A cat's life at stake. (laughs) That's exactly right. But it's crazier than you think. There's a lot of weird shit going on over at Tim Pool's house. I'll tell you that right now. Whistleblowers and everything are starting to say stuff. But All types of blowers. Yeah, the best kind of blowers. Uh, Okay. So do you think there will be any kind of a new article or new statement put out? How, How did you two leave things? Um, I thought me and Shane left things good. He said he was going to call me, actually, like later on in the day, and he never did. So I just kind of was like, oh, I guess he's probably writing or something. Typical man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just left me. He just left me hanging. And then he just tweeted like not that long ago about that article. He just was like, ah, I stand by what I wrote. And you know what? Nothing swayed me. And I'm just like, oh, really? Yeah, I just put that in the private chat because I was like, did you guys go over this already? I didn't know. Um, But Hey, you got your Twitter back though, right? I got my original Twitter account back. Yes. Oh, okay. I just yeah. I just followed oh, that one. Congrats. I had a call. I had a call in a favor from Elon or whatever. It just took a oh, while. Okay. Uh-huh. A favor. <laughs> yeah, just a little s- small one. Sure. Yes, we did pull this up earlier. So this is Shane basically saying that he doesn't regret what he wrote. That he still believes it's all true. Right. Mm-hmm. What else can we yep. get from this? Yeah, that's just kind of a slap in the face. But him saying did it or what I told him didn't sway the story coming down. I think that's just a like a hundred percent false. Well, I think it like what it does is it it really shows that. I mean, I don't know this person. I don't know Shane before this whole Eliza Blue situation. I had no idea who he was, but because I know like Tim Cass is trying to be kind of like you know alt alt journalism and like blah 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 like for for this guy to write an article series like this and then have it taken down because it's not factually correct um and like attack bands and all this stuff and then come out and be like i'm like you know i'm proud of my work like what are you really proud of dude like you're you're proud of basically you know writing nonsense and and like lies and just libel and like you're you're proud of that work like you couldn't be i don't know you can at, at least take another stance like okay like maybe i should have done a better job like no it's like i don't know it, it's it's very like very mainstream journalism like it just it comes off as such a mainstream thing to say like just you know not even own the fact that you made mistakes and not even own anything just be like yeah whatever i'm i'm you know i'm grateful for my fans and i'm proud of my work and like fuck everybody else that like doesn't like it you know it's just like dude your article is not even available anymore (laughs) it's gone what about all those tweets eliza made where she was talking all that crap all these journalists are going to be looking for that article. They're just going to be like, it doesn't say anything. It's, there's nothing here. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, at a point she was saying, oh, anybody who has questions, refer to this article. 
Yeah. And it, it just basically goes to show, like, I don't know what Shane's going to do next, but, like, if I ever see his name on another article, I'm going to be like, well, like, I'm not going to, I'm going to take everything you say with a grain of salt, boy. LawTube says Tim could be sued if the article was not taken <clears throat> down. Mm, he could still be sued even now that it's been taken down. 